This video is designed to help you with your GIS task based on Typhoon Haiyan. Let me tell you right from the outset how it's not meant to work. You're not meant to watch this video at the start and watch all the way through. You might be relieved to hear that. The idea more is that I will put some links into the Google Slides document that you'll be using on the way through. And if you need a little bit of further instruction or tip, or if you need me to kind of show you something on the screen of how this would work, then you'll click on the link and I'll try to bookmark it so it takes you into the relevant part of the video. So if you're watching this from the start, I jump back on into the Google Slides, have a go at the questions and see how you get on. And then you can call back in here if you need some help. So whenever your map opens up, you're going to be given an overview of the whole world. This is Typhoon Haiyan, but I want you to see where this fits in in the global perspective with this one. Uh, marked on in green here are uh, some of the areas where you get tropical storms happening. We've looked at a map similar to this one before, um, and this one shows you just the location here of where Haiyan is and the Philippines just in here. I want you to get an overview sense before we start to go in. And the simple question to get you started really, um, you'd have no problem with that one, is name the ocean that Haiyan started in. So if this line represents the track of Haiyan, hmm, I wonder what ocean that is. You can write the answer down. Bookmark 2 takes us to a little bit more of an overview here of the actual storm. Now I'm going to turn off here this regions where the tropical storm occurs. That's how you turn the layers off and on just to simplify this down a little bit. And what you need to do here is to take a wee look. I will turn this one on as well, the Typhoon Haiyan points. Um, and the question here is using the legendary key clicking on the dots on the map, what was the date and the time that the storm changed from a severe tropical storm to a typhoon? Now you'll need to click on the little legend tab here to pull up the legend or key and you'll see that it's typhoon status whenever it's red. So there's all of the dots. Now I'm not going to click on the, um, the actual answer for you here, I'm just going to illustrate it with a different one. But if I pick this one for example, I can pull this up. It'll tell me the category is definitely typhoon, so that kind of corresponds with the key. It'll tell me the date and the time, and that's the information I need to pull out. Just a couple of things about this, because the date format is in the American format, and they always put the month first. So the 11th is November, November 8th, and 12 UTC is basically 12 midday on your slides it helps you to kind of check some of the others as well so if you go on here 1800 hours at six o'clock in the evening that kind of thing so what you need to do is find out whenever it turns into typhoon first click on that and get your answer and convert it um, from uh, the way i showed you into proper dates and so forth The next one asks you to take a look at the red dots. Now the red dots represent when it's called Typhoon. So from here through to here, those are the red dots on the map. And the question is to find the fastest wind speed that was recorded during this Typhoon. What was the speed and what was the date or time that it occurred? Now if we start over here, um, before it becomes a red dot, you can see that the wind speed here is 18. Now, the units here are meters per second. I'll talk to you about those in a moment. Uh, 18, and as you move further across, the wind speed's getting up. So the first of the red dots here, 35 meters per second, 40. And as I go across them, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So you basically just need to work your way through all of those dots, find out what the maximum wind speed it was, and find the date and the time, and then you need to transfer that across. Well, just one thing you've got to do here with this one. The wind speed here is in meters per second. Um, I probably, um, you'll struggle a little bit to kind of envisage 45 meters per second, just how fast is that? So we're gonna convert it into kilometers per hour, which is something we can relate to a little bit more. So how do you do that? You take the figure here, 45, and you multiply it by 3.6. Definitely advise you use your calculators for that. That sums a little bit more than a fingers and toes job. Next one takes us to bookmark three. This is the overview of the satellite. And I'm gonna come back here into the content and I'm gonna turn on the Typhoon 
satellite image. There we go. There's a satellite image of the Typhoon. So the, this little task is to give you a bit of a sense of the scale of it, the size of this Typhoon. So if I come here to the measure tool, click on here um, and I need to select this one for distance. Now I'm not going to measure this out for you because I want you to do this yourself but I'm going to show you how to measure it. So you come over to your map, click and um, drag and then double click and you'll get that measurement. Now you need to measure from about there where I'm pointing with the mouse to about there where I'm pointing with the mouse. That distance from there to there so you can do that and get the distance in kilometers and add that into your Google Slides. Next one is bookmark four. This is the storm damage overview for this one. So what I'm going to do first of all is to turn off the satellite image because that's kind of cluttering things up a little bit and then up here to the high end storm damage. I'm going to turn that layer on. It may take a moment or two for your internet connection to pull that down. Uh, and what are we looking at? Well where do we find what we're looking at? The legend of course. Um, and what we're seeing here is that red is the most damage orange in the middle and that yellowy color the least damage and your question here is this to describe the pattern of damage across the philippines i've given you in your google slides a map that shows you the name of the three main islands this one at the top is luzon the one in the middle is Visayas, and the one down at the bottom here is min Danao. I hope that I'm pronouncing those correctly. So those are the three main islands. You need to be referring to those in your description and you need to be looking at compass directions. So what is the pattern here with this? So let me guide you with that question. So we'll start with the blue line, which uh, of course represents the center of the typhoon where the eye came across. Remember, um, that's Beside the eye is the eye wall where you get the most damaging winds. So as I move north from the eye and the center of the, of the um, typhoon, the amount of damage tends to do what? As distance to the north increases, damage decreases. As distance from the s to the south increases, damage decreases. Um, you can definitely see that in that map. So that means that the islands that were damaged most were Visayas, um, followed by um, Mindanao, and the island that seemed to uh, have least damage uh, and impact was Luzon. So you can see that with the islands north-south, but you can also see, I think, an east-west pattern here. So as you move from the east, where the typhoon hit first, and head towards the west, as distance from the east increases, or as you move from east to west, the amount of damage decreases. That's another thing you can pull in. So mention the three islands, mention the to the north, to the south, and mention from the east to the west. Next we go to bookmark five where we come in closer to those islands that were damaged most of the Visayas islands. And what I want to do here is go back into content and I'm going to turn off the layer of storm damage so that we don't get too cluttered and I'm going to turn on the layer of storm surge. Now in this case we'll turn the legend back on to see what we're looking at. These are proportional circles. The larger the circle the higher the storm surge. And your question in the slide is this. Discuss this statement. The storm surge was higher in locations closer to the center of Typhoon Haiyan. Discuss the extent to which you agree with this statement. Remember the blue line represents the center of Haiyan. So basically if that statement is 100% true, closer to the center is where you're going to find all of the big circles. And as you move further and further away, the circles are going to get smaller and smaller. Now, to what extent is that true? When you get a to what extent question, it implies that the answer is not a simple yes or no, or agree or disagree or true or false. This is going to be true to an extent. Now, to what extent? To a slight extent, to a certain extent, to a large extent. Well, have a look at this. Let's take this line here. Certainly, as you move up here, the circles get smaller. There's a slightly bigger one. 
And if you come over here, the circle's smaller there, and it gets actually really big when you come here. These circles here are almost as big as these circles here. In fact, um, you can you look at the key to see the size, but you can click on them. So this one here, it's 3.6 meters high. Remember, that's, that's the height of my classroom. What is it um, in this one? It's 4.6 meters high. And over here, 4.3 meters high. What about up here? It's 2 meters high. So you can definitely see that it's true to a, a certain extent, but it's absolutely not true. In fact, up here to the Sibian Sea, again, I hope my pronunciation is okay, you can see that there's some things up here where um, that is the storm surge is much higher. Now, I wonder what might be the explanations for that. Uh, I don't know, we're speculating here, but if I come into this one where the storm surge was much, much higher, um, look at the shape of the coastline here. Maybe um, the water was funneled in to this bay, and as it was funneled in, it, it packed in tighter together, and then it had to go up higher because of, of that. Who knows? But certainly there are things other than just the distance here that you need to bear in mind. Now, the explanation isn't asked for in the question. It was just speculating there. What you are asked to do is to answer the question, um, to what extent do you agree the storm her surge was higher in locations here? Well, definitely most of the big circles are close to this. Don't forget to quote figures. You can go in and grab as many as you want there. And as you move away, you're getting lower figures in all of these. You can quote some of them around here. You can mention some of the names of the places. But, and that's an important word, um, in a to what extent question or, or however. However, it's not a perfect relationship. It's higher in locations like this and you can bring in some exceptions with that as well. Next up, we go to bookmark six, which is going to take us into Tackleban City, which is just in and around about here. So let's go in there and have a little bit of a look of Tackleban City. You can kind of zoom in and out a wee bit here just to see exactly where you've gone in the Philippines with this one, because it does take you in really, really um, quickly and suddenly to this one. But there's Tackleban City. Let's have a look at what we've got to do here. Now, um, I want the layer of building damage turned on. So if it's not turned on, that's the one to turn on here. And again, we need to check the key. What's it telling us? Uh, it's telling us that anywhere we've got the red, buildings have collapsed. And anywhere we've got the orange, buildings are damaged. The question in the slides is this. Describe the pattern of damage across the city. Where are most of the collapsed buildings located? And where are most of the damaged buildings found? Well, you have a look at the bay here. You can definitely see there's an awful lot more red down towards the bottom of it. And you can definitely see that there's an awful lot more red close to the coastal areas. So the areas right beside the sea um, tended to have more buildings um, that collapsed entirely due to the storm surge. That's probably not very surprising, is it? But there's also a little bit of a kind of a north-south difference here as well. This area up to the north um, has a lot of damage, but not so many buildings collapsed. If we zoom in a little bit closer, take a look at the contour lines here. You can see the land here slightly higher. This looks like lower ground, so the storm surge would have come further in. But because it's slightly further inland, the buildings are less likely to have collapsed entirely there because, sadly, the poor folks living here, their buildings bore the brunt of the storm surge and absorbed some of the energy in the way in. So where are most of the collapsed buildings found? The collapsed buildings are mostly found to the south of the bay and along the coastline, and the damaged buildings are inland a little bit further towards the north. That's the kind of answer that you need for that one. And the final bookmark is, oh, sorry, um, let me one that I missed out there. Uh, one other thing that I want you to do before we move on to the final bookmark, and that is to come back up again to the measure tool. And this time we're not going to measure the distance, but we're going to measure the area. So what I want you to do is to roughly estimate the area that is um, experiencing damaged or uh, collapsed buildings. You can do that by just clicking, click, click click, 
as you click further and further around that um, and you will see as you go around just roughly around the edge and you can finish that all off just follow all the way around here and around here around here all the way to the end and then that will give you if I double click to finish that will give you overall area now I've clearly haven't done the whole thing here because I want you to do it but go all the way around the edge here these areas here take that all in and see what roughly what area um, of Tacloban City were the buildings damaged or collapsed And finally, we're going to move on here to bookmark 7, which is going to give us a close-up of Tacloban City. We've come down to a really, really small scale now. And now, to give you a sense of the scale, I want you to use the measure tool um, and the distance this time. And you're going to measure from the coastline to this road. Approximately what distance is that? You can go and figure that one out. And then the questions here. What's the relationship between the following two variables? Distance from the sea and the extent of building collapse and damage. Okay, so as you move in from the sea, clearly in this area here, looking again at the key, most of the buildings have. It's red, so what's that mean? And as you move further on inland, most of the buildings here are orange. What's that mean? There are a few that have collapsed, but there's definitely a mostly red here mostly orange here. So that's your answer for the first one. But the second question is what the relationship between building size and building collapse and damage. Now if you take a look at these buildings here, they all look much much smaller don't they? Now there again there's some small buildings in here but look at the size of these buildings. Okay so I think there's definitely a relationship there. The red ones are mostly what size and the orange ones tend to be what size. What is that relationship to? And the very last thing that we do here is to actually um, not use um, the ArcGIS for this one, but we're going to be using for this one um, Google Street View. This is exactly the same area as we've just been looking at, right? So it's exactly the same area. We've come in here, um, but this time you're going to take your little Street View person and you're going to bring your Street View person just down here to that coastal road that we we're just looking at. And we're going to take a wee look at, uh, let's move down here a little bit, just take a bit of a wander down this road and you can see. Now, if I turn to the right, just over there is the sea and to the left is the inland bit. So you can just take a walk down this road um, and you can have a look around, right? Inland, look at the size of the buildings and out towards the sea, look at the size of the buildings. So you definitely have those kind of shanty towns that tend to be closer to the sea uh, to the right here and um, if you have a look you can see these small stalls in the shanty town buildings and so forth the smaller and more vulnerable buildings in some of them whereas you've got bigger brick buildings here that are maybe um, slightly more able to withstand the sea whenever it comes in so this is the inland view here and this is the sea view here. You can take a look there. Um, and the question is, why are they so vulnerable? Look at what they're made from. Look at that. Corrugated iron. Um, just bits and pieces of, of materials that they could find and put together. Does that really look like that could withstand that storm surge? We've seen what it looks like when it comes in. Could that withstand it in the same way that that could? That building's certainly going to be damaged. That building. And have a good look there and you can um, take some screen grabs and put those in and answer that question.